All right, let's take a couple more examples. And this is one that I'm quite confident you've all seen as well. And this says we're going to add up the squares of the first n integers. And, and again, I've gone back to the informal notation. Because, you see, when I look at that first line, I, I can feel that. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3. That's, you know, I'm just taking the squares of the first n integers. And you're supposed to get a formula which is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. All right, so here's the proof. First, verify that it works when n is 1. The left-hand side is just 1 squared. And what's the right-hand side when n is 1? 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 over 6, which is 1 times 2 times 3 over 6, which is 1. So check. It works. OK, so now what do we do next? We assume it's true when n is k. So we write down an explicit particular instance of this statement, assuming validity when n is the integer k. And now, what do I do? I added the term k plus 1 squared to both sides. Everybody should see why I added that one and not twice k minus 1 or 42 or sine theta. Or Why did I added k plus 1 squared to both terms? Because that's what I need to get the left-hand side. All right, now, look at the algebra that's on the right-hand side. I first put the, the answer and added the k plus 1 squared. What did I do in the next line? I got a common denominator of 6, and I multiplied out the k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. OK, what did I do in the next line? I just grouped the terms. And what did I do on the final line? I factored that polynomial. Now. You can check that out, because that's just, it's just high school algebra, multiplying out k plus 1 times k plus 2 times 2k plus 3 to see that you get the polynomial 2k cubed plus 9k squared plus 13k plus 6. But if you remember back to high school, factoring polynomials when you get up to cubics and cortex is tricky business. And you know, it might take you several minutes. Should it take you several minutes to do this? No. It, you should do it like this, because you know what the answer is. Unless I've lied about the problem, which I, which I might. But that's what I would write down to start with. And I'd just check it out that it works. And where does it come from? It's the right-hand side when n is k plus 1. So I would, I would write that line down, and then I'd go over here and check it out to see if it was correct. But it wouldn't take me seven seconds to write it down. I know what it has to be. I don't have to waste time. Find all those tricks, remember those dirty tricks you learned in high school? Synthetic division and all those tricks, you know, that, uh, uh, you're looking for integer roots, and you got this one, and then you take a factors of this, and the factors, and you take all those possibilities. Forget all that. You just write down the answer. And, and then just check that it works. Are you with me? OK, good. Let's take another example. We want to prove that the expression n cubed plus n plus 1 cubed plus n plus 2 cubed, the sum of three consecutive cubes, is always an integer which is divisible by 9. Okay, that's the statement we want to prove for all n. So first, we check it when n is 1. When n is 1, you're looking at 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed. And trusting my arithmetic, that's 1 plus 8 plus, it isn't 25, it's 27. Okay, But you still get 36. Not when you add 1 plus 8 plus 25, but when you add 1 plus 8 plus 27, you get 36, which is divisible by 9. And when I post this, the 25 will magically become a 27. OK, now assume it's true when n is k. So I didn't write down the statement this time. I'm saving space. See, I, I'm, a good mathematician is selectively lazy. Now, 
Most students, when I tell them this, they remember the lazy, but they forget the selectively lazy. Question. I made, I, I, what, what, which boo-boo did I make this time? Three cubed should be 27. Yes, I, I, I just commented on that. So uh, once again, that 25 should be a 27. Okay, so I didn't write down the assumption when n is k. Because everybody knows that's what I'm doing. So I jump to write down the k plus 1 thing, and I say k plus 1 cubed plus k plus 2 cubed plus k plus 3 cubed. That's the next three cubes. And now I rewrite them. I take the last one and make it first. And then I expand k plus 3 cubed. Now, I hope I did this correctly. k plus 3 quantity cubed is k cubed plus 3 t plus k squared times uh, 9k squared. I hope I did that right. Plus 27k plus 27. Check me out. Did I do that correctly? And then I've left the uh, last two terms as is. All right, now I take the expression on the third line and reorganize it by leaving the k cubed in the front and then take the k plus 1 squared and the k plus 2 squared terms on the far right and move them to the left. And I put them in, in brackets. And, of course... Yeah, yeah, sir, I've wanted to mumble. This is being recorded, so I can't curse. <laughs> but there's several uh, superscripts that are wrong here. Okay. Let's look at, I, I've told you about my PhD student, Rudong. Uh, it's a wonderful, very, very smart guy. Rudong Wong. He doesn't hear what I say. He hears what I meant to say. And when I write on the whiteboard, he doesn't read what I wrote. He, he reads what I meant to write. Now, I need you all to be like Rudong and look at this proof and read what I meant to write. This, this exponents are supposed to be cubes. So that k plus 2, the last one, k plus 2 squared, is supposed to be k plus 2 cubed. And, and on the next line, the k plus 1 squared and the k plus 2 squared are supposed to be k plus 1 cubed. So bear with me, and I'll fix this when, when we publish this. The term that's in the bracket is supposed to be three consecutive cubes. All right. It isn't, but it's supposed to be. But then the stuff that's on the right-hand side is the 9k squared plus 27k plus 27. And now the whole thing is divisible by 9 because by the inductive hypothesis, the statement is true when n is k, and that makes the bracketed material on the left-hand side divisible by 9. And obviously, 9k squared plus 27k plus 27 is divisible by 9 because each of those three terms is divisible by 9. Okay, modulo the subscript errors, and I apologize for that. That's the proof by induction of this. And by the way, I hate PowerPoint. I absolutely hate power. Do you realize how long it takes to do this? Um, and you're probably saying, well, you should do it more carefully, but anyway. <laughs>